How are you, sir? Perfectly fine. Alhamdulillah. That's great, mashallah. So, tell us something about yourself, about your education, about your work experience and all. Basically, I'm a mechanical engineer. That's great. And uh, I have been working in the industry for the last 21 years. So, after completing my engineering, I started working in a steel industry. Mm. So, with the passage of time, I realized that I need to complete my education first. Mm. Because along the way, when you get the experience, eventually you will need more skills and more education basically, mm. so that you can basically run the organization uh, being at senior positions. So, that is the reason I decided to go back to university even after 10 years of working experience. Mm. So, I did my MBA in marketing, sales and marketing and uh, then I basically, I was lucky basically that I got an opportunity to travel to different other countries, mm -hmm. especially Europe and I got some certifications. Uh, that is a kind of informal uh, but it's like a specialized education, mm -hmm. professional education which covers like rolling bearing technology certification from different other countries including Sweden, mm -hmm. Germany, Holland, mm -hmm. Italy, Switzerland, Malaysia, Singapore, Dubai. So that is where my career path was changed basically. Mm -hmm. So I met with different people, I worked with different companies and I realized that there is a huge gap. The working, the way of working in Pakistan as a professional is not up to the mark as people do in other countries. Mm -hmm. So I started improving myself and I started improving the way I used to work. Mm -hmm. So that is where basically all the difference was made. All right, that's great. So you have got your education from Pakistan and you've also got so many trainings from, other, from abroad, from other countries. What do you think? What is the basic difference of learning in Pakistan and in abroad? Basic difference is basically the approach, mm. the vision. Actually, in Pakistan, most of the people tend to get education only because they want to get a job. Mm. But in real world, in other countries, people go for skills. Hmm. and they try to get some, they try to, get, to acquire some skills which basically can help them to excel in their career. Hmm. So, um, whatever you do, you need to be good at doing that thing. That is basically a missing element in Pakistan when yeah. we see in corporate industry. Yeah, that's the true dilemma that we see over here that every student who is learning that he is learning only for that certificate exactly. and that certificate is also only for the, to get a job. But how about the way you mentioned that you find it out that the way people are working here in corporate sector or in their offices, it's not up to the mark. So what was the real flaw that you found here? The real flaw basically is that people are not doing the job what basically they are good at to do. Hmm. Somehow, some way, they have started doing something. Hmm. Because they have not cho choose the education according to their in uh, personal interests. Mm. They have not uh, got the opportunity to choose the right job for themselves. Mm. So this is the reason they are not basically happy with the, that job actually. Mm. So they are doing it because the, they are getting salary. Mm. So this is the reason they are, they are unable to put 100% into that job, into mm. that work basically. So how can you expect 100% result when you are not putting 100% efforts and you, your heart and mind is not basically into that. Mm. This is the reason that people are not basically uh, being able to flourish within their career. So the basic reason what I understand for this that if you're working for some organization you're not happy but still you're doing it for money, you cannot take decision, a strong decision, a strong decision like makes a difference between a successful person and a failure. We got it. It needs courage. It needs a strong decision. But who is responsible? I mean, if this is happening over here, who is responsible? He himself is responsible. His teachers, his trainers, might be his parents, his society, government, institution. Who is responsible? Who is responsible? Everybody is responsible, basically. Hmm. So it's like, first of all, it is the job of the government, number one, to provide the basic infrastructure, hmm. equal opportunity for everybody. Then it is the job of the teachers who are basically teaching every student in the school, university and colleges. So they have to provide quality education. At the same time, parents' role is very important. Mm. They need to create an environment at home so that the kids and children are basically being brought up properly according to the um, current society needs and demands. 
so parents teachers government all institutions until the age when the person itself himself reaches to some age that he becomes an adult and he starts taking decisions for himself or herself after that age he is also responsible mm -hmm. for example if i went to steel industry i started working there i realized that i'm not made to do that job so that realization came after like 20 22 years mm -hmm. so after that even after that I, if i continue working in the same environment and i don't change my career then i am the responsible person mm -hmm. not my parents not my teachers but yeah. before that age when i am dependent on society parents teachers and other come uh, people so that is the time when they are more responsible i am re less responsible so this is how we can build basically a better society by providing equal opportunity equal rights equal education so everybody is responsible basically yeah so if we put it in a nutshell so what do you think what should be the the baby step the step zero the step one that we consider this is where we have to take a start i mean should it be the education training for instance you were saying the parents are also responsible they are they should create a environment where he should learn all these things that he has to he has to how he has to work dedicatedly so what do you think like should there be some sort of trainings for for the parents as well for might be for the instructors or for the trainers or training itself is the solution it is actually uh, an evolutionary process mm. so with the passage of time uh, things are changing mm. so the the thinking and the vision of parents and teachers and institutions is changing mm. even the vision of individuals is changing mm. because you know the the today's kid who is basically at the age of 10 years is more mature than mm. the age basically when i was at 10 years mm. old so this is the way things are evolving actually with with the passage of time so i believe that education is the answer of all questions mm. so how you can improve number one quality of education number two provide education to each and every person in pakistan mm. and number three providing them the education which is basically suitable for their career mm. so everybody cannot become a good doctor everybody yeah. cannot become a good engineer so if you for example a uh, few years back uh, the the vice chancellor of king edward medical university they invited us uh, at their office and we went there to meet him he said i have a problem i get students from all areas of pakistan but there are many many students who are not supposed to be a good doctor mm. they don't they don't basically have that mm. potential inside them that makes them a good doctor they get the number they qualify for the mm. admission but they are not the people who should be the ideal doctors mm. so help me to improve them basically to provide them the personality development classes mm. doctor patient relationship classes language classes mm -hmm. so all these things we designed and we started teaching at king edward medical university for six to one batch of 300 students so mm -hmm. that made a difference basically and we realized that this is the case with every discipline in pakistan yeah. with we have to we have we have been lucky to go to uet umt punjab university benzir bhutto shahid university peshawar bzu kin knade college lahore world college for women university lahore university so everywhere we have realized that students are studying they are learning something but that's not close to their heart mm. they don't want to become a doctor but they are being they are in the process of being becoming a doctor mm. so that is the reason after getting the qualification and degree they will not be able to put 100% into that profession so what thing that we can consider that whole of the education system is based on reading and writing yeah i mean speaking is not there even listening is not there personality development is not there the scene making skills culture is not is there, not there. Culture, culture is not there yeah so uh we got this thing and the, the way you said that you have provided so many trainings into different universities renowned universities how did you start these training things yeah <laughs> so that's a very funny story basically mm -hmm. i was working with a swedish company in pakistan and the company the the immediate manager who mm -hmm. basically i uh, my immediate manager he uh, asked me to go to rawat near islamabad there is a company sadik feed feed mills mm -hmm. basically they produce feed for the chicken okay so i was given a task to go there and and conduct a 
brief training session for food doctors mm. on using our product in their mm. company. So I got the presentation, I went there and I started talking to doctors in the presentation and I realized that they started sleeping. They were literally sleeping in the session, everybody. Even I realized that what is going on? I was unable to, to engage them. I was unable to deliver the message. I was not being able to convey what I was supposed to do in that session. So this r realization made me to think like, do I, I, am I going to conduct this kind of training ever again mm. or not? And I, I decided that this is what I loved to do. Mm. And I have to improve. And I started improving. And you know, the, the presentation had 488 slides. And few months later, mm. I was capable of conducting that presentation without looking at the PowerPoint slides. And all 480 slides were like on my fingertips. So I tried to learn how to conduct a proper presentation, the way of communication, the, how to engage audience how to design and deliver the presentation according to the need of the audience. Mm. So it took me almost 11 years to mm. basically skill. And still I'm learning. So it's a continuous process. With your age and experience and observation and exposure, you become more mature to deliver the message in a best way. So first of all, I must appreciate your courage that you are sharing your experience with otherwise like because everybody over here is afraid of the failure and you are sharing your failure story and the failure made you to take this decision that I have to do this. There is a saying that if you find to do anything difficult, you have to do it more. Exactly. And you did it and mashallah you are one of the successful trainers in Pakistan now. So what sort of trainings do you provide? My, uh, my major area is like engineering and maintenance. So being engineer and having ex experience of uh, engineering for the last 21 years, I am more focused and more qualified to conduct rolling bearing technology training programs across Pakistan. Even I have been uh, conducting these sessions in UAE for quite a uh, short time, but uh, that's also a part of uh, my experience. So rolling bearing technology means like every industry has machines and every machine has some uh, rotationary parts. So we provide technical training to industrial clients so that their machine life is basically enhanced mm. and uh, they can get better production, better processing time with minimum cost of maintenance mm. and failures. They can reduce the failures. So we provide them uh, training on basic bearing knowledge, then designation systems of bearings and bearing failure analysis actually. That is, that is something uh, the basic subject is like in Pakistan there are only one one or two people who basically are capable to conduct this kind of mm -hmm. failure analysis training so we provide this training to all sugar industry cement industry food and beverages in, uh, steel industry mm -hmm. and uh, paper industry everywhere even textile industry so we help them to improve their processes the maintenance processes, their production processes, so that they can get maximum benefit of production with minimum cost of maintenance. Alright, that's great. Uh, but that is for industry. That what is for, have for general public. Exactly. The, based on my exposure and experience, I, I always love to conduct sessions on uh, career counseling for students because I have been uh, a permanent faculty member with Higher Education Commission for the last five years and I have been lucky to conduct training programs on different soft skills programs across Pakistan within 32 universities. Mm. So communication skill, presentation skills, work delegation, effective team building, mm. sales and marketing being, being head of sales in Pakistan at RKB Europe. So uh, sales and uh, work delegation, monkey management is a specialized program which I I'm doing in Pakistan for the last 10 years. Mm. So these are basic, basic uh, essential skills basically. Mm. I conduct basically. Monkey management is a very funny name. Yeah. What is that? Monkeys are basically tasks. All right. For example, if somebody comes to you and asks you, I have a monkey on my back. Mm. 
hmm. and I want you to take this monkey on your back. Hmm. How do you feel at that time? You will say definitely, no, no, thank you so much. Yeah. I don't want to take your monkey. Like if I'm uh, heading, if you are heading to a meeting hmm. and I come across and I say, I have to talk to you about a very important topic. Hmm. And you will, you will say, okay, fine. I will give you a call in the evening. Let's talk then. Hmm. So you have got the monkey. The monkey jumped from my back to your back. Yeah. So you are now supposed to call me back at the evening time. Otherwise, you can say that, okay, fine, Khuram, don't worry. I want to talk about this topic with you. Uh, right now, I'm heading to a meeting. So why don't you give me a call in the evening? So the monkey stays with me. So this is how you can handle uh, not basically taking every single nitty gritty mm -hmm. task from your subordinates and pile up on your back. And you are unable to deliver your basic core responsibilities. So as a manager, people fail because they yeah. take a lot of extra nitty-gritty tasks. Mm. That's a wonderful training, by the way. And what do you think uh, is the real definition of soft skills? And what is the real need in our, in our society nowadays? Technical skills are important. But you know, when basically I categorize skills in three, three categories. Number one is technical skill. Technical skill means like driving the car, mm. operating the telephone, mm. using the gun mm. as a soldier on the border. These are technical skills. And technical skills, if you learn, if somebody learns technical skills, he will remain, always remain on the front line. Mm. He will remain on the junior positions. So if you want to grow in your career, then you need to have human skills like how to deal with humans, how to manage them, how to manage their emotions, their skills, their work. So if you uh, want to go to middle management level, then you need to have human skills. And if you want to further grow in your career, then you need to have intellectual skills. Mm. The visionary aspect of leading a team, a company, a country. So these are, these are three important categories. And I believe every single human being should have all these three skill sets. So essential skills are basically part of human skills and intellectual skills. Mm. So this is how I basically look at this. Uh, what a great definition. I never thought it that way. These are the mechanical, technical, and then human, and then after that, uh, intellectual. intellectual. Sir, thank you so very much for your time. It was a wonderful session with you. Thank you so much. Thank God you, sir.